So with the release of Set9, Riot is removing augment stats from their API, so websites are no longer able to display this information for players to use. And I personally do not like this change at all, but there are still some merits to it. So I figured that in this video, I'll go through some of my thoughts on this change and some of the consequences it brings. So let's get started. So one of the main justifications for this change is that players will no longer be solving the meta nearly as quickly as the spread of information will stagnate. And this will give the dev team more leeway and time to balance in their two week cycle. In the past, this two week cycle has shown to be insufficient for TFT balance. And this was especially the case in set 8 with hero augments. With this change, players should be encouraged to make their own decisions rather than rely on statistics as this information will no longer be accessible and digestible for players to utilize, especially mid-game. But ultimately, hiding this information may not do anything in terms of how fast the meta is solved each patch, as a lot of the more experienced and innovative TFT professionals stream and share their knowledge. These streamers will still be broadcasting the latest tech or broken comms, which will then be imitated by viewers across a multitude of ranks. So this information will still find a way to trickle down. It is objectively true that players can obtain a much more rigorous and informed opinion about multiple facets of TFT by digesting the data that was on these websites. But with this data being removed for augments, players will form their opinions from other guides, gameplay and from watching streamers. And this is bad because those types of content have an inherent bias from the person who made it. And with such a small sample size, any opinion formed could just be extremely unreliable. This data is unbiased and reliable, and it's up to the reader to analyze and interpret it in a meaningful way. Of course, there were players that just picked the highest win rate augment at every augment selection. But this change feels excessively targeted to these players, who I believe are a small portion of the player base. And surely those players will just imitate tier lists or guides now. So ultimately, what difference would this change make to those players? This change adversely affects the rest of the player base, especially those who do not have as much experience or playtime with the set. Naturally, this will lead players to have discussion around augments, but what platform or forum would this discussion be held on? Realistically, it'd be Reddit or Discord, but would you sift through hundreds of posts of discussions just for information on a single augment? And conversely, what if players didn't share information about something they've discovered with augments or their interactions? Displaying the augment stats in a transparent and accessible way did wonders for discoverability, because players can easily find anomalies and interesting information that they would not have been able to otherwise. I do expect players to be more inclined to experiment and try different augments, as they will be unaware of the performance of those augments. But this does not translate to comp diversity, as the other stats will remain unaffected. Players can still and will look up comp websites for the meta comps on each patch. So overall, this change could be good for creativity as there will be a portion of the player base that will no longer be able to rely on these statistics. But this is really bad for transparency as the same information may be gatekept or have bias and be unreliable. The majority of players will now be making less informed decisions around augments. Now, another argument is that this change will make competitive players rely on their own decisions rather than the data. But I feel as though this was happening anyway, and competitive players were using the data to eliminate the poor augment choices, and then they would decide between the remaining choices using either familiarity or compatibility. And some of those players are professionals who put a lot of time and commitment into TFT in order to learn as much as they can about each set. These pros aren't affected that much by this change as they usually have enough experience to form their own opinions about certain augments. But this change will disproportionately affect casual players who do not have that time to invest into TFT and just want to find out as much information as possible in the shortest amount of time. I imagine it will be very frustrating to be mid-game, get offered three augments you've never seen before and have absolutely no direction as to what you can do with any of the augments. In the limited time you have for the augment selections, you will no longer have any useful tool to help you in making an informed decision. And this is especially true when you're learning a new set. And again, this won't be a problem for pros as many have already put a lot of effort into set 9 before it has even come out by playing it on the PBE. But even if you played on the PBE, it is not possible for players to know all of the intricacies of every single augment, especially since there are 276 unique augments in this set. 
For most players, that can be hundreds and hundreds of games to familiarize themselves with all of the possible lines, augment combinations, and comp permutations. So now, your options to experience an augment is by watching content or by having first-hand experience. We can do a crude calculation to estimate the time demanded to play each augment combination once, and here we can see that comes out to 230 years of playtime, which doesn't include any differences caused by portals, legends, and any augment buffs or nerfs. Asking a player to obtain all of this experience or watch hours upon hours of content just to learn a single game mechanic is far too much. That is an insane time consumption for anybody, professional or not. Having the data was just so simple, efficient, and digestible, and Riot have not said anything about a replacement for this extremely useful tool. Let's look at this footage here. There's a bug, but where is it? As a player, it's almost impossible to discern bugs by looking back at footage because there are so many factors at play on a single board. There are item interactions, unit positioning, augments, abilities, CC, etc. And that makes it equally as difficult for the dev team as well. A recent example of this is Infinity Edge on Samira, where she was dealing less damage with more crit chance. This was discovered by players who were observing the data for Infinity Edge and were interested why it was performing so poorly. So even though Raya overlooked this bug, the players utilized the tools they had, data, and discovered the bug anyway. Players found out about this bug before Riot did, so players already knew the issue and how to avoid it. So now Riot should take on the responsibility of informing players of any issues or bugs with augments, as otherwise players can be bewildered by augments not functioning the way they should. But what happens when Riot doesn't know there's an augment that isn't working the way it should, or is bugged entirely? If Riot doesn't know, there is no other way for players to find out without first-hand experience with the issue. This restriction of information is detrimental to players, especially when an augment is bugged, and transparency on these bugs is crucial to the player base. There will be augments that you should always pick because they're so strong. This change may hide that information and stop players constantly picking a handful of augments and stop those augments dominating a patch. Conversely, there will be instances of augments being so weak that you should never pick them, and after this change, the only way you can find that out is by taking the augment and failing with it. This promotes trial and error, but the time taken to play one game with a certain augment and the time in between games where you take that same augment may just be too long for you to learn anything valuable about that specific augment. The sheer number of augments will lead to an infrequency of playing with them, which makes learning significantly more difficult. And sometimes you can take the same augment again, as you didn't realize that augment was the issue in your previous game. So in set 9 with portals, legends, augments, items, units, and so on, it's really hard to tell what exactly caused you to lose a round against another player, even when it looks like you should have won, because there's just so much happening on your board. With these changes, it is impossible for you to confirm whether or not your augment choices were a problem. Sure, you can speculate, but what happens when your augment is just too weak? or bugged entirely. How are you going to perceive that as a player by watching gameplay? The data was completely transparent when it came to this specifically, and now the players are at the mercy of Riot if they tell us an augment is underperforming or bugged entirely. I think that the players that just picked the highest win rate augments are a non-issue. The bugs and unbalanced augments are much more of a problem that players should always be aware of. So personally, the negatives of this change greatly outweigh the positives it brings and this change just doesn't make any sense to me. I've been racking my brain trying to understand why Riot made this change. It hasn't been an issue in the past, so why is it an issue now? Ah, the problem is Legends. If you watched my video on the worst parts of set 9, then you know that I think that Legends that are meta have the potential to ruin the set, and that is because the playstyle that each Legend promotes will become dominant if multiple players stick to that playstyle. For example, let's suppose that there are numerous units that are extremely powerful when they are 3 starred, and so rerolling becomes the meta. As such, Lee Sin as a legend would then see an insane pick rate and multiple players in a single lobby would be using Lee Sin and his playstyle. Multiple players doing this in a single lobby is great for them as they will thin the pool for each other and make it easier for each other to hit their 3 stars. Meanwhile, players of different strategies, like Fast9, will be struggling because those re-rollers are doing loads of damage to them in the early to mid game as the re-rollers boards are insanely stronger. 
those fast 9 players will likely bleed out before they're able to remotely get close to level 9. So stats on these legends would permit players too much information as they would be able to directly discern which specific playstyle is performing the best and those players would just adhere to those playstyles. Balancing these legends isn't as simple as balancing their augments. We can see this using the same examples as before, Lee Sin and Aesol. These augments are already pretty balanced, but Aesol could be extremely oppressive as a legend if there were many 4 and 5 cost units that were overtuned and completely overpowering. Likewise for Lee Sin, if there were many units that when 3 starred clearly overperformed, then even just Trade Sector will be a problematic augment because it makes it much easier for players to 3 star their units. So balancing these legends extends beyond balancing their respective augments. And I don't think these legends will achieve an ideal balance until the entire set overall has a good balance. If we use the past couple of sets as an example, that will happen in the last few weeks and patches of the set. I think that having meta legends genuinely would completely ruin this set, as you would see several players utilising this legend, which would result in a single playstyle dominating whilst killing the other ones off. This change doesn't enable fun. Instead, it prevents misery from balance issues throughout the set. So, with all things considered, I personally believe that Riot removing augment statistics from the API and consequently websites is a completely awful decision. This change is a sign of Riot's lack of confidence and capability in accurately balancing the game in a reasonable time. Thus, they have to resort to hiding the information so their failures aren't as apparent. They did not do this for set 8 and hero augments, so with Riot already displaying a lack of confidence for set 9, I fear that Legends will turn out much worse than hero augments and we will have another 6 months of pain to deal with. And players will still find out that information anyway. The same day this was rumoured and discussed on Reddit, Clear TFT created stats on the performance of Legends in Emily Wang's PBE tournament. So clearly players will still find a way to obtain the information they want. And before this video ends, I will stress that you should not resort to any direct or personal attacks to any of the TFT or Riot team. Riot's intent was to promote communication and discussion through this change. While I also encourage this discussion, I do not condone any sort of malicious behaviour. So please do not harass anyone, it achieves absolutely nothing. But yeah, that's all I'll cover in this video. While there may be some positives with this change, I am not looking forward to this at all as I have lost an extremely useful tool in both learning and understanding the current state of TFT. But now I'll leave some questions with you guys. How do you feel about this change? Will this lead to higher quality games? Will the meta be in a better state? Or is this just an awful change from all perspectives? Let me know in the comments and remember to subscribe. Anyway, check out these other videos if you want to see more from me. And as always, Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.